Hello everyone, welcome to Spin Academy. In this video, we're going to discuss the Ableton Live interface. We'll break down everything you see in the window, step by step, to give you a basic working knowledge of the software. So let's get it started. When you first open up Ableton Live, your set will look something like this. This is the basic default layout. One of the core aspects of Ableton Live that makes it different from other programs is its dual functionality. There are two main ways that you can interact with music in Ableton Live. The session view and the arrangement view. You can think about the two views like this. The session view is geared more towards playing live or DJing, and the arrangement view is geared more towards creating songs and mixes. They're connected through many of Live's global controls, but they can be used separately depending on what you're doing. By default, Live will open up in the session view, but you can switch between the two views by clicking one of the selectors on the right hand side of the screen or by clicking the tab button. There are many functions that are unique to each view, but in this video, we are going to focus on the interface functions that are the same for both views. Let's start by looking at the top left corner. To the far left is the external sync switch. This switch turns external sync on and off. When activated, Live will follow the sync source that has been selected in the MIDI sync preferences. Next to this are the sync in and out indicators. These indicators will flash when Live sends and receives MIDI sync messages. To the right of the sync indicators is the tap tempo button. You can click here once per beat to set Live's tempo. The metronome and all warped audio clips will follow your tapping. Tapping can also be used to count in. For example, with a 4-4 time, tap four times to start playback at the tapped tempo. Next to the tap tempo button is the tempo indicator. This shows the current tempo for this live set. While it is active, all warped clips will play at this tempo. The tempo can be set by either tapping it in, clicking and dragging up and down, or typing it in. Another tempo control function are the tempo nudge controls. These are buttons for tempo nudge up and down, which temporarily increase or decrease the song tempo. This can make it easier to synchronize with live musicians or with other sources. Next to the nudge controls is the time signature indicator. This shows the current time signature of the live set and can be adjusted by dragging the numbers up and down or by typing in a number. To the right is the metronome switch. Clicking the switch will activate Live's metronome, which will play an audible click synced to the master tempo and time signature. If you control or right click on it, you can set the length of a metronome count in from when you want to record into arrangement view. The next section are the transport controls, which control various playback features. The first button is the follow button. If activated, the display will scroll during playback to keep the current song position visible. Follow behavior can be set in the look field preferences to scroll continuously or on a page by page basis. To the right of the follow button is the arrangement position indicator. While in playback, this displays the current arrangement position as bars, beats, and 16th notes. You can drag up and down or click in and type numbers to set the arrangement start position. While typing, you can type a comma or a period to advance to the next field. Next to this are the play, stop, and record buttons. Click the play button or hit the space bar to start playback. If you hold shift and hit play, it will continue playback from the arrangement position that you last stopped at. And if you hold the option key and hit play, it will play back the section that you have selected in the arrangement view. Click the stop button or hit the spacebar to stop playback. Double click the stop button to stop the song and return the song position to the very beginning. The global record button will record all of your actions into the arrangement window, including launched clips, clip property changes, and mixer or device control changes. Next to these buttons is the overdub button. Overdub recording applies to MIDI clips only. When the overdub button is on, any existing notes in a MIDI clip will be mixed with 
rather than replaced by newly recorded notes. To the right of this is the Back to Arrangement button. When you play Session View Clips or change automated controls, this button will light up to indicate that the current state is different from the state that is stored in the Arrangement View. Clicking this button makes Live go back to the state stored in the Arrangement View and will allow you to play audio in the Arrangement window. Next to this is the drop-down quantization menu. You can click here to choose the global quantization, which sets the rhythmical intervals that clips can be played at. This is used to make sure that all clips are played back on the same rhythmical grid and will synchronize with each other. The button to the right is the draw mode switch. This button turns draw mode on and off. Draw mode is used in the clip view for drawing envelopes in MIDI and the arrangement view for drawing automation curves. The next section includes various arrangement loop controls. First is the loop start indicator. This shows where the arrangement loop region starts, showing it as bars, beats, and 16th notes. You can drag up and down or click and type in numbers to set the loop start position. While typing, you can type a comma or a period to advance to the next field. On the right side is the arrangement loop length indicator. This shows how long the loop is in the same beats, bars, 16th notes fashion, and can be adjusted in the same way as the loop start controls. In the middle is the loop switch. Click this to turn the arrangement loop on and off. On either side of this are the punch in and punch out buttons. These are used when recording into arrangement view and are tied to the loop controls. When you activate the punch in switch, recording will not happen before the position of the arrangement loop. When you activate the punch out switch, recording will not occur after the position of the arrangement loop. For example, if both buttons are activated, recording would only happen in the exact spot and for the exact length that the loop has been set. Let's move to the top right of the screen. The first button is for the computer MIDI keyboard. When activated, this switch allows you to use the computer's keyboard to play notes into MIDI tracks. The next button toggles key map mode on and off. In key map mode, the screen will change color around the parameter that can be mapped. This means that you can assign a button, switch, or toggle to be controlled by your computer's keyboard. You can assign a key map to a function by clicking on that function and then pressing the corresponding key on your keyboard. All key mappings will be displayed next to the function that they are associated with. Next to the key map button, are the key and MIDI in-out indicators. These indicators will flash when Live sends or receives MIDI or keyboard information. Next to this is the MIDI map mode switch. This is similar to the key map mode switch, but allows you to map functions to any MIDI controller that you have connected to your computer. To the right of the map switches is the CPU load meter. This meter shows how much computer processing power Live is currently using. Excessive CPU load decreases the computer's response to user interface activity. Heavy CPU load is mainly generated by instruments and effects. Next to the CPU load meter is the hard disk overload indicator. This indicator lights up if Live was not able to load audio from the disk in time. This condition usually results in short dropouts in the audio output stream. Hard disk overload may happen when playing or recording too many clips at the same time, or when abruptly changing the song position. To the far right are the MIDI track in and out indicators. These indicators flash when Live's tracks send and receive MIDI messages. To the far left is Live's browser, where you'll find all of your instruments, devices, and other files. Click on the top button to show or hide the browser. The second button will show Live's devices. From here, you can access all of Live's built-in instruments and effects, as well as their various presets. Under the device browser is the plugin device browser. This is where all of your third-party instruments and effect plugins can be found. The next three buttons will show file browsers. Live's file browsers display files from your computer that can be used in Live. Common file locations can be saved and access through the bookmark chooser in the browser's title bar. Files can be added to your live set by dragging them directly into the session or arrangement view. The button on the bottom 
is to access the hotswap browser, which is used only when hot swapping files. Hot swapping is a shortcut function that allows you to replace various files on the fly. Within the file browser window is the preview tab. You can select a clip in the browser to see and hear a preview of it in the preview tab. You can enable the preview button by clicking the headphone icon on the left, which will autoplay any samples in the file browser. Near the bottom on the left hand side, you will find the button to show or hide the groove pool. You can drag and drop grooves into this window and edit the various parameters of each to suit your needs. The bottom section of the screen, known as the detail view, serves two main functions. This window doubles as the clip view and the track view. The detail view displays the properties of a selected clip. The selectors below the clip box at its far left show or hide the available property boxes. You can resize the detail view by dragging its upper border. The button in the bottom right hand corner of the window will show or hide the detail view. To the left of this button is the track view selector, which when clicked will bring up the track view and show the selected tracks devices. You can drag and drop instruments and effects onto a track and they will be displayed here. If the selected track has any devices, this selector contains a miniaturized display of the device chain. When the track view is open, the track view selector also acts as a scroller. To the left of this is the clip overview indicator, which is a visual overview of the clip's entire contents, such as the audio waveform or notes in a MIDI clip. You can click this to bring up the clip view, which will allow you to view and edit the selected clip's properties. When the clip view is open, this indicator also acts as a zoomer and scroller. You can switch between the clip and track views by pushing shift tab. The long bar at the bottom is the status bar. This is a multifunction display that will keep you updated on the progress of various program activities. For example, when loading sets or buffering audio files, it will show the progress as a percentage. If you select or hover over an audio clip, it will show its path and file name. The button in the bottom left corner of the window will show or hide the info view. The info view is a great resource that will tell you various information about different aspects of live when you hover over them. These are some of the basic functions of live that you will use in both session and arrangement view. If you want to learn more, Check out some of the other Ableton Live tutorial videos that we have on spinacademy.com.